Hello and welcome back to this, the third installment of our exploration of light blockers in Renderman Studio. In the first two installments, we had a look at light blockers as they pertain to area lights in Renderman Studio. In this tutorial, we'll just quickly have a look at how we can get them working with environment lights and possible ways in which they could be useful to us. Uh, environment lights being extremely ubiquitous, useful within um, current pipelines. So I've just dropped in a random environment light. And I'll just do a quick render. Let me just get my image tool open again and let's do a re-render. Unsurprisingly, we get a render. Cool. Let's put some objects in here because it's always good for us to have some stuff that actually works with it. So let's go and I'll work with uh, polysphere. I'll make a polysphere and I'll move it up. Let's scale it slightly more. Okay, slightly bigger and move it up a bit more again. Okay, there's a polysphere. Um, as with most objects which are smooth, I like to actually apply a random attribute here for a subdev scheme so that when it renders, it will render smoothly. So let's have a look and see how this looks. Re render. Okay, yeah, it's rendering smoothly, but we don't have a random man material on it yet. So let's go to random man and put on a standard RMS GPS. So this will have this will have some uh, specular component to it as well. Let's re-render it. Okay, that's working quite well. I'm going to tune my lights here a little bit. So when I say tune my lights, I want to actually, um, with my light environment light selected, I'm going to change my sampling. My samples, I'm going to change from 16 up to 128 which will get rid of some of my noise here. I could also uh, work on some of the samples within the quality settings. So quality settings here are set quite low at a shading rate of 5. But here we go, we've got quite a nice looking sphere. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit more to it and see how it looks in our render. Okay, not bad at all. Not too bad. Now, with our environment light selected, which we have here. Let's have a look. We have, again, the option of putting in a co-shader. So no surprise seeing as we're dealing with light blockers. Right-click on this and create RMS light blocker. And let's just see what this can do for us. So let's move it up here and let's increase the size. If we go back to it, we can see here we've got quite a sharp um, specular reflection coming around the edge here. Let's see what happens now. You can see that the light blocker is actually blocking that off quite successfully. Okay, let's scale this even slightly more and re-render. It's blocking all of the light from the scene though, so it's making this appear dark. Now I can get rid of that slightly, the darkness, the extreme darkness, by blurring the edge. And you can see the effect we're getting here is quite interesting. It's giving us, as opposed to this edge here, which is fading off into nothingness, into the, the brightness of the plane here, it's giving us a bit of a better defined edge. Okay, let's see what happens when we use this with the environment light having an image, an environment image. So let's look for an image and I should have in my environment directory here, let me just go to, okay, I'll be looking in blockers directory. I'm looking for an HDR, which I put in here, I believe. Come on, there we go. You may have seen this HDR before if you've been watching some of my other tutorials. It's my favorite. And let's try re-rendering. Here we go. So for example here, if I wanted to actually cut out 
the reflection of the scholars here. Let's just see how I can do this with my blocker. If I just take my blocker and just make sure I've got my blocker here and rotate it. And let's move it up here. Oops, let's move it up here. And let's see where else I can move it. Come on, move it across so that it's going to be blocking some of the section here. Let me try and reset where that view is. Let's see what happens now. It's darkened this slightly. Now my edge softness is ex extremely sharp there. So let me just go here and I'll edge sharpness down to zero and re-render. And you'll see there's the whole thing is being blocked there. We're getting darkness also. Now an effect which you may want to try on your own, which you want to, I'll actually um, give an example of, we could separate the specular and the diffuse components of this scene. Actually, in fact, let's do it. Okay, let's give this a go. I'll try doing this. So I'm going to duplicate my environment sphere, my environment light, just selecting it and control D. Let me see if this has worked. Edit. Control D. Okay, so we've got two environment spheres. Brilliant. Let's have one of them set to this is our first one. This one is only going to actually work with specular. So this is the one which I've got the light blocker attached to. First light, let me just rename this to spec. Okay. So its specular contribution is going to be 1, and its diffuse contribution is going to be 0. The second environment light, let's set that so that its specular contribution is 0, and its diffuse is 1. Let's see what happens when I re-render. What I'm trying to get rid of is the, the overall darkening here. So let's go and re-render. Can you see how cool that is? I've cut out the specular element and retained the overall lighting. So I think that's quite a cool effect to be able to do. Let me just scale this up slightly larger. It's my light blocker I'm looking for here. Come on, light blocker. Light blocker shape, and let's scale it. Scaling it. OK. Let's get back to my original location somewhere like this and re-render. So here I've managed to get rid of almost the entire skylight while retaining specular reflections from the sides and the overall lighting quality is as we would have liked it. So hopefully this has been useful to you. I think light blockers are really cool and interesting and um, Come back shortly, we should have some more information for you on other aspects of Renderman Studio.